Alrighty, well, we're going to go ahead and get started this evening. Thank you so much for joining us to have this really important conversation about uh, Rumpke Waste and Recycling expanding their list of accepted plastic materials. Um, we're really excited about this news. And this evening, we have on the call with us tonight, Guyana Markarian. She is the uh, communications manager for Rumpke Waste and Recycling. Uh, my name is Amy Densborn. I'm the education specialist for SWACO. Um, and then we also have um, my supervisor, um, programs manager, Andrew Booker, on behind the scenes this evening to um, kind of answer your questions tonight and um, streamline the process um, a little bit as we go along. So if you do have questions, we're going to be filtering those questions um, through the chat um, feature. So just as a friendly reminder, everybody is on mute this evening. Um, so if you do have a question, you're going to want to type it into the questions and chat feature. And then another useful um, tool on the GoToWebinar platform is the orange arrow that you see that if you click on it, that will open up a control panel. And within that control panel are a series of um, different options to help enhance your experience tonight on the GoToWebinar platform. So um, if you open up the questions and chat feature, you can type in your question. And then there's also um, a handouts feature that we have three handouts this evening. Two of them are from Rumpke and it's um, a list of the accepted items and a little bit more explanation about um, what types of plastic tubs are accepted. And then there's also the handout for the slides this evening that you'll um, be seeing in this presentation. You're welcome to download those during the webinar. If you forget to download them, do not worry. You can always email me afterwards and I'll be happy to send these handouts um, your way via email. Getting a little ahead of myself here. So before we dive into the contents of the webinar this evening, I did want to briefly provide you with an overview of what we do at SWACO. So SWACO stands for the Solid Waste Authority of Central Ohio. We are one out of 52 solid waste districts really focused on improving the solid waste stream through effective reduction, recycling, and safe disposal at the landfill. We work hard to position ourselves as the leader in environmental sustainability by offering a range of services and programs, including these many different programs on the slide. And so we have we offer programs from everything from um, grants to help provide uh, waste reduction and recycling for communities, nonprofits, um, as well as providing compost and recycling containers to events. We host over 55 different drop-off locations for you to bring your recyclables if you have overflow or you need additional capacity. And then we sponsor various mobile collection events um, for household hazardous waste, prescription pills, um, and other um, other hazardous waste that you wouldn't want to put in the landfill or your recycling bin. I'm not going to go through every one of these tonight, but if you do have any questions or you're interested in learning more about the waste diversion programs and services that SWACO provides, please check out SWACO.org. So as a community, uh, residents and businesses alike, we're creating more waste every single year. Over the past several years, Central Ohio has been experiencing population growth in a booming economy. As more people move to Columbus, Ohio, more of that waste ends up in our local landfill. Even though more waste is ending up in the local landfill, our rates of recycling and composting are increasing yearly. In fact, in 2019, Franklin County reached an all-time high recycling or diversion rate of 50%. That's pretty impressive considering the national average is right around 34%. So we're doing some really outstanding work here in the community. 
And we were continuing to build out additional diversion pro programs and provide that grant funding to improve the infrastructure um, for even more materials to be recovered, manufactured in new products, and diverted from the landfill. Swaco has established a long-term goal of reaching a 75% diversion rate by 2032. But we can't get there alone. We need everybody's help. We can all work together to reach this goal. Now is the time for us to all make a difference. With that being said, we're really excited to have Rumpke Waste and Recycling as our recycling processor here in Columbus, Ohio. If you are a resident in Franklin County and you have access to curbside recycling, or you take your recyclables to a Swaco drop-off location, this information tonight applies to you. It does not matter if you have Rumpke Waste and Recycling as your hauler. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, Franklin County, your materials are going to Rumpke's Material Recovery Facility in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm going to turn it over to Guyana to tell us a little bit more about Rumpke and the changes that we should anticipate seeing in our recycling programs. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you for having me on today. Um, I, I'm really excited to be here uh, to talk about some of the changes that we're going to be implementing. Um, but first, just a, a brief overview of Rumke. Um, the company was actually founded in 1932, uh, and it's been family owned and operated um, for, for nearly 90 years. You know, um, even still today, the company is owned and operated by the Rumpke family, and it's um, one of the largest privately owned uh, waste and recycling firms in the country. We have um, just about over 3,200 employees, and um, it, and we've been operating for some time, so waste and recycling is our expertise. Rumkey reaches parts of Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and West Virginia. We operate 14 landfills, uh, 11 recycling facilities. We actually have a one-of-a-kind glass processing plant located in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and annually, uh, Rumkey as a company recycles uh, over 1 billion pounds of material. So um, I think most of you know that the, the way that um, your material works is you uh, put everything in one container, whether it be a drop box or your cart, and um, that, that's commingled single stream recycling. Um, and, it and it comes to our material recovery facility, pronounced MRF for short. Um, our MRF contains advanced techno technological machinery, infrared lights, conveyor belts, magnets, uh, with, and um, of course employees that all help sort recyclable material by type. Now, as Amy mentioned, if you live in Franklin County and you have recycling services, this information applies to you. Um, also, if you are a Rumpke customer, you don't live in Franklin County, but you're a Rumpke customer, this information also applies to you. Um, so. Uh, with that being said, um, what is changing in your recycling program? Now accepting tubs. We're really excited to announce that your containers are about to get a little tubby. Um, we're gonna be accepting tubs like butter tubs, um, cottage cheese, sour cream, whipped topping, uh, yogurt containers, um, fruit cups, you know, think like applesauce, diced peaches, um, and like pudding snacks, things like that. Um, so all of those are gonna be now accepted in our recycling program. And we're really hoping that you can help us spread the word. Um, so with our plastics category, um, you know, previously what we had included in that category were bottles and jugs. So basically, if the base was wider than the neck, um, that's what we were looking for. Um, well, now, because of advanced technology, we're able to now accept um, these, these tub, tub containers. Um, it, it's really um, important to note that, you know, um, 
Rumkey is really dedicated and committed to recycling, right? We're constantly working to see what else is out there, who we can partner with, how, we, you know, what can we do? Um, who can we work with? And um, this new technology, part of the, um, part of the reason why we're able to um, recycle this material is um, the, the technology that was developed to assist with the smell and color of this particular plastic, which um, made, it, made it difficult to recycle in the past. Um, so we've made some adjustments at our recycling facilities to be able to um, you know, accommodate for this material. I want to um, take a moment right now to go over lids. Um, that's probably the number one question that we get when it comes to plastics. Um, for your bottles and jugs, we ask that you please uh, put your lids back on. Um, we actually ask that you reattach your lids for all the material, um, including tubs. Uh, you know, reattaching the lid is going to be definitely helpful for us, and um, there's a higher chance that that material is going to get re recycled. Now, if you don't, um, you know, reattach the lid, that's okay. Um, but we want to stay consistent with our messaging, and for plastic containers, we're asking that you reattach your lid. Um, and uh, and just give that material a rinse if possible and, and put the lid back on. Um, this would include bottles, jugs, and tubs. So um, while we're excited to announce that we'll be able to accept tubs, there are some items that we do not want um, in the recycling stream just yet. Um, items like takeout food containers, clamshells and solo cups and prescription medicine bottles, um, you know, with this new program and with this new introduction, um, we kind of want to walk before we can run. So, um, you know, the, the clamshells and the to-go containers, um, they're not part of the program just yet. Hopefully we can add those. Um, but another really important um, pillar for Rumkey is um, transparent communication. So we're not going to tell you that we can take your clamshells if we don't have an end user for them. If we don't find a home for this material, then we can't say that we're gonna recycle it. And so when we give you these five categories of material that you can recycle, um, it's really important for us to be honest and transparent as, you know, as much as possible. That's why we welcome questions, we welcome um, any kind of educational opportunity because we, we wanna be transparent with, with our customers and with the public. Um, and like I said, you know, we want to walk before we can run. So hopefully one day we can add those items, but um, for now, there are no. Um, why are we adding tubs now? I think um, I touched on that a little bit with the new technology coming um, online to be able to um, sort this material. We're now able to uh, find a good home for these tubs. Um, and uh, when I say a good home, I mean an end user. It's, it's really important to note that um, Rumkey is a processor, not an end user. So what we do is we take your material, we sort it, uh, we bail it, and then we ship it off to an end user. End users are companies like Paper, like Envision. Those are companies that will take that material and um, convert it back into cardboard boxes or back into tubs. Um, so for us, one of the most important um, ways to operate is to secure long-term partners, these end users, so that we can have a vital long-term operation. And as I've discussed, um, end users are um, companies that take that sort of material and turn it back into a product. So um, Envision, Pure Cycle, St. Joseph Plastics, these are just some of Rumkey's partners um, that will take those tubs and they will turn, turn them back into tubs. Um, another really interesting and fun um, part of this announcement is that uh, we actually were granted, um, we received a grant from the Recycling Partnership. Um, and for those of you that don't, don't know, the Recycling Partnership is a national agency dedicated to improving recycling. Um, we received a grant to, to install robotic technology in, um, in, our, in our recycling roof in Cincinnati. So we're excited um, for this new technology, for this new opportunity to, uh, you know, to see where that takes us. Um, 
as I mentioned, Rumkey is dedicated to recycling, dedicated to the process, and uh, and I'm looking forward to see what happens um, with that technology. Now, uh, we are set up to be able to collect that material without the technology, but um, but it, it, it'll definitely help us um, enhance that operation. Um, I want to take a take a moment to discuss um, the triangle with the numbers. So um, sometimes that can get a little confusing because um, you know folks think that oh well if it if it has the triangle it means that it's recyclable. What that actually means is the the triangle with the number indicates the type of plastic that is. So it's the resin identification code. Um, so one through seven is just the type of plastic that you're recycling. It doesn't necessarily mean that that item is recyclable. And um, to uh, reiterate those five categories that, that we have, um, paper and paper, uh, paperboard and cardboard. So a good rule of thumb is if you, um, if you can rip or tear, uh, you know, the, the paper or paper cardboard or paperboard, um, then it's likely recyclable. We, we have some questions about, um, you know, the, the lean cuisine or um, frozen meals, um, and and really the test is if you can rip it then it's recyclable what we don't want is things like photographs or um, laminated paper um, really anything that uh, you, you wouldn't be able to easily tear um, we also accept metal cans um, a really fun and interesting fact that i love about uh, metal cans is that you know you could um, put a, you know, for example, a can, a Coca-Cola can in your recycling container. And um, from that moment until it's back out on the shelves, it's about 60 days, which is um, phenomenal when you think about it. Um, we will gladly take your glass bottles and jars. As I've mentioned, we have a glass processing plant in Dayton, Ohio. So um, we would love to take your all your glass bottles and jars of any color. Now, um, important to note that um, we want glass bottles and jars that um, are used to contain food, such well, food and, and beverages such as wine or maybe pasta sauce or um, pickle jars. That, that's what we're looking for. Um, glass uh, containing, you know, for example, dishes or windows. Um, we can't accept that glass because we're not quite sure what's um, inside of that glass. Uh, also cartons. So that would be like broth. Um, milk or uh, juice, we ask that you please remove any straws and caps um, when you recycle your cartons. And last but not least, plastic bottles, jugs, and now tubs. So some things that can't be accepted. At um, the beginning of the presentation, Amy went over some uh, really wonderful resources that Swaco um, offers. And I uh, have to admit, I've taken advantage of some of these resources um, quite a bit, actually. I, I live in um, Columbus and it's great to be able to drop off my batteries or paint um, because those items are actually quite hazardous. Um, you know, batteries can start a fire in our MRF. They can start a fire in our trucks. So they don't belong in your trash or your recycling. Um, so Swaco is a great resource. If you live in Franklin County, um, you know, uh, find find a location. Um, Swaco will provide a location where you can drop off batteries. Um, other items like propane tanks and helium tanks, um, quite hazardous. And then we have items like, um, you know, VHS tapes and garden hose and um, and textiles, and those are called tanglers. So that photo is actually a photo that I took of our Columbus Murph. Um, it was about two years ago. Uh, I was in our Murph and all of a sudden all production halted. And it was because I think you can see that orange fencing was caught all the way through the machine. Um, we had to stop everything. Our um, employee had to lock and tag and get into that machine to be able to cut that um, orange fencing out. And um, and this is this is a great example of how tanglers can really halt operations 
for us and how, how they can potentially damage our uh, machinery. So um, some good examples that we've seen come through our MRF, things like ropes and textiles, really um, bed sheets, blankets, clothing of any type, um, does not belong in your curbside or Dropbox recycling programs with Rumpke. Um, items like dog leashes and chains, garden hoses, cabling, wiring. Um, around this time, we see a lot of Christmas lights. All of those items, again, are labeled tanglers. We've seen um, a lot of those coming through our MRF lately. And again, you know, they're not part of the um, five categories that we have. And the reason why they're not part of those categories is they can be um, a real nuisance for um, for our employees to have to stop operations every so often to cut cut this um, material out to dispose of it properly to make sure the equipment is functioning. So really be mindful when you're um, filling up your recycling carts or drop boxes. So what we do is we take bales of material and, um, and we ship them off to end users. And I know I've mentioned end users quite a bit, but um, but, it, you know, it, it's really important, um, it, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but it's really important to note that Rumkey is a processor, not an end user. So, you know, we send about 95% of our material to domestic, domestic markets, um, so that means they stay right here in the United, United States, and most of that ends up here in the Midwest. Um, a great example of how Rumkey supports the local economy is by selling paper and cardboard products to Pratt Industries, which is located right here in Ohio. Pratt Industries takes our cardboard boxes and turns them into more cardboard boxes. And um, we were already uh, quite uh, uh, online-based commerce society, but I think um, in the last year we've seen you know, um, a spike in online purchasing. And so it's really important um, to recycle your cardboard. A uh, great tip and suggestion I have is um, to please break down your cardboard. It helps conserve space in the recycling truck and um, if you can fit it in your cart, that's great because then um, it's not, you know, left out to the elements um, and, you know, it doesn't get wet or, um, or blown away. Um, another example for, you know, that we have with tubs is, um, you know, companies like Procter & Gamble and Nestle, um, they're located in Ohio and they're part of the reason why we have end users because those end users are now selling this, these containers, these tubs back to companies like Procter and Gamble and Nestle. So it's great to see it all come around full circle, impacting our um, economy on a regional and sometimes even local level. And I think Amy has really great insight into impact of our economy. Thank you so much, Guyana, for all that wonderful information. Um, we just have a few more slides here. And then we're going to start opening it up with all of your guys' great questions tonight. Um, and so <clears throat> just to reiterate what um, Guyana was mentioning, we do know that recycling is good for the environment. That's why many of us recycle. We really know and value um, conserving our resources, saving those resources for future generations. But did you also know that recycling helps to create a more resilient economy? So just in central Ohio alone, the recycling industry supports 372 businesses and about 5,000 employees, totaling over $1.3 billion in annual revenue. And a fun fact that I always think is interesting is for every one job in the landfill sector, there are 10 jobs in the recycling industry. So we know that it's, it's good for the economy as well. So before we dive into your questions tonight, I also wanted to briefly highlight a couple programs that Swaco, um, Swaco sponsors, um, one of them being the, um, the, the reuse and recycling search tool. So if you have other questions regarding how to properly dispose of light bulbs, batteries, um, electronics, um, bicycles, yard waste, I mean, I could go on and on please use our search tool. You can, it can be found at RecycleRight.org. And there's about 300 different locations on the website for you to safely uh, recycle, compost, donate a wide range of items. 
many items do there is a way to divert them from the landfill you really just have to know how and so if you are decluttering around the house i know many of us are spending more time at home right now um, we're looking at minimizing and getting some junk around out of the house um, instead of throwing it in the trash can or the recycling bin, get on our search tool, um, figure out if there's a way that this material can be uh, rescued and given new life to, to somebody else or recovered and recycled. If you're on the website, you're having difficulty navigating it or finding the um, specific type of material that you are trying to recycle, you can always email us at info at .org, or you can give us a call during regular business hours and we will be happy to point you in the right direction. Another useful SWACO program that Guyana mentioned earlier is our free and permanent household hazardous waste location. Um, this facility is located um, off of East 8th Avenue near the fairgrounds. Um, there's kind of, it's, when it has kind of strange hours. It's Wednesday through Friday. I always encourage you to, um, you know, look ahead, look it up online, make sure that they're open when you're looking to dispose of your item. Um, and then look also um, on the website or call ahead to verify that they will indeed accept your material that you're looking to recycle. So as a general rule of thumb, this facility will accept anything that has labeling on the product packaging such as flammable, corrosive, poison, danger, caution, or use in a well-ventilated area. So this is going to be your, um, your paints, your smoke detectors, your um, fats, oils and greases, batteries, um, uh, any, anything that's flammable. Um, just a quick tip when it comes to uh, latex paint. Latex paint is considered non-hazardous. It is water soluble. Um, you can dispose of that in your regular household trash. You first need to prep the latex paint by drying it out. You have just a little bit of paint left over at the, in the bottom of the can. Open the lid and it'll probably dry out on its own. If you have half of the can of old paint, probably need to dry it out by putting something in there that'll absorb the paint. So you could use kitty litter, sawdust, I believe they make some sort of mixture that you can get at Lowe's that's actually designed to um, mix with latex paint. Um, and then you want to place that um, in your trash can with the lid off. And so that way, if the waste hauler that's picking up your trash, um, when they see that, that paint can, they will know that you did your homework and that you're safely preparing that, that paint for the landfill. Okay, so that it concludes the um, informational portion of the webinar tonight. Um, now we're gonna open it, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew so he can start um, fielding some of your guys' great questions tonight. Diane and Amy, let me just tell you, we have some avid recyclers I can tell by the questions, very detailed. Um, I wanna start really focusing on plastics. So we have a lot of questions about a lot of different topics, but since today is in particular about this new information about plastics recycling, let's start there. We had a couple questions. This is probably, most of these will be for you, Guyanne, but let's start with this one. We had a couple questions about um, prescription pill bottles and prescription um, medicine that comes in like a, a liquid bottle. Are those recyclable? Uh, are those recyclable? Um, I would say no, those are not recyclable. I would, I would say no. Okay, um, I have a question, uh, several questions about lids. So let's just, again, let's stick with the plastic theme to begin with, which is uh, somebody asked a question if it is the kind of bottle that has a pump on the top of it. Um, is that considered a lid? Should that be kept with the bottle or does that need to be removed? That, that should be removed, yeah. Okay, I'm glad I asked because I, I don't know that I, provided the right information to them on that. I told them I was gonna ask you specifically to make sure I was right. Um, we had a question also um, about um, these this tub issue. Does it have to be round? Could it be a square tub? So some, some butter is in a square tub. Oh yeah, I, I think that's fine. Um, a good rule of thumb I would say is when you're looking at your um, dairy section, so really like, any butter tubs, cottage cheese, sour cream, um, whipped topping, 
the yogurt that comes in the the bigger containers, not the single serving yogurt. Um, those are all those would all fall in, under that tubs category. Great. Again, we're just gonna get narrowing down here to the last couple of plastics questions. Uh, I think you talked about it. I just want to make sure everybody heard it. What about peanut butter jars, plastic peanut butter jars? So the problem with peanut butter jars is they get to there's so much food waste in them and it's um, it's just really stuck in there. Um, I would say if you can rinse out your um, peanut butter jar thoroughly, then um, then yes. Uh, my recommendation is to put some hot water and put the lid back on and give it a good shake. Um, and just get get all that peanut butter out out um amy's recommendation i think is fantastic she uh gives it as a treat to her dog so if you have dogs that's probably a great idea <laughs> and then maybe rinse it out one more time real yeah. quick. And, and, then, quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then still maybe rinse it out but but let your pup have a, a treat because that's adorable i love watching dogs with peanut butter jars um one thing I do want, so I do want to mention to everybody, we're probably not going to get to all of these questions, but we will answer them all. We'll, uh, we'll answer them offline via email if we don't happen to get to your question. Um, so I wanted to mention that. Um, the other question I had is, I think it's a great question, is why, sh why should people put the lids back on the containers? So um, great question. You know, it, it, helps us and makes it easier on us, but it also gives it a higher probability that um, that lid will get recycled because um, sometimes the lids are a lot smaller than the actual tubs. And um, and so it just, you know, by probability, it, it just has a higher chance. Um, now it's not a big deal, you know, right? If you toss it in, um, that, that's not a big deal. However, I do wanna note for um, like, bottles like water bottles lids that are this small um because they are such a small lid like if you can take a look at how small this is um and you saw the images of our murph um you know that murph is huge with really big machines something that's this small would likely get lost which is why we say please put those back on which is really i think an important point just to maybe emphasize for folks which is your murph your recycling center is very uh, technologically designed to separate different kinds of materials by the shape and other characteristics. And so some of these rules about how to um, prepare that material is important so that it will actually end up in the right place. And so um, we've got a lot of very, very specific container type questions. I just don't think we're going to have a chance to get to all of them. But I want to ask Amy a question, which is if you ever are out there and you have a, a an item and you're not sure about it and you maybe you look on our search engine you can't you're still not sure what is you've said it once but let's say it again what is an email address that people can always use to get their answer on a very specific item please email us at info at swaco.org and we will get you an answer to your question That's you right. can also call us we have someone by the phones, um, 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Really great ladies. Uh, they will also help make sure that your question gets an answer. And we might even ask you to send us a picture because sometimes got, that helps Rumpke to, to help us with the right answer. Let's talk, I'm gonna maybe one final plastics question. It's just a general question. Somebody says they read an article once that indicated that uh, a lot of plastics don't really get recycled. And so you talked a little bit about some of your partners here in Ohio, but why don't you talk a little bit more about some of your end using uh, folks that you sell this material to that are right here in Ohio, some of them central Ohio, some of them in the neighboring states. Yeah, so, um, and I do want to note that one of the reasons why, um, you know, we are so successful is because we secure long-term partners, right? Um, so there might be um, issues in other regions, but for us, for Rumpke, um, our, our goal and our um, entire model is set up on finding long-term end users and long-term partners. I, I think I mentioned Envision and Pure Cycle as some of our um, partners for Tubs, but um, but, but really, and the reason why, um, you know, like, as I've mentioned, why we're saying no to clamshells is because if we can't definitively tell you that we can recycle it, 
we're not going to say yes. Our entire goal is to be transparent, is to be honest, and to encourage people to recycle. So when um, we say that these five categories are getting recycled, that's 100% true, right? It's not getting landfilled, Swago's not taking it, um, we're not burning it, your, your cartons, your paper, your cardboard, metal cans, um, glass bottles and jars, and now bottles, jugs, and plastic tubs, those are all going to be recycled. They're gonna find an end user. Um, and as I mentioned, companies like Envision and Pure Cycle are just some of our end users. Thank you, that's great. I wanna jump to some other material types because we have a lot of questions about other, other materials. Some of these are ones that I know a lot of people share. So I'm gonna throw a couple of them at you. Shredded paper, what's the best way to handle shredded paper this is for Guyan? So I wanna be clear, we do not want plastic bags um, in the MRF, right? Um, and, and that just is a, a safety matter. Um, you know, when we have plastic bags, our, our employees don't know what's inside of them. And so to keep them safe, we wanna make sure that we're not putting them at risk. The only time that we accept bags in our MRF is clear plastic bags with shredded paper and only shredded paper inside of it. So that's how um, you would dispose of shredded paper, but please make sure that it's clear and please make sure that there's no other material with the shredded paper because then we're not sure, you know, what else is in there. If it's not a clear plastic bag, it's very likely that that material will be just taken off and not even recycled at all because there'll be, it'll be too risky to put the material through the equipment if, if they don't know for sure what, what's in that bag. Um, another one, well, this will be for you, Amy. Somebody said that they saw a picture of an aerosol container in one of the photographs that, that was part of the presentation. How about aerosol containers? Can those be put in your curbside program? Aerosol metal cans? Yeah, aluminum yeah, aerosol. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the way to prep those is to make sure they are empty um, and then remove the tip off of the aerosol can so that way the workers at Rumkey know that you have prepared this material and it is safe to handle. Excellent, thank you. Um, here's another one. Um, this is a this is a tricky one, but um, paperboard takeout containers like Asian food containers. Diane. So a lot of those containers are styrofoam. If you mean the actual like the the um, paper boxes that are foldable, the problem. Mm -hmm those is they um, often are saturated in food waste. So um, if it's absolutely clear and there's no um, food waste or residue like grease, um, then sure. But the, the problem that we run into is that it, oftentimes that material is um, it is just contaminated with food waste. Um, and I, I want to bring up pizza boxes as a quick example, just because we're on uh, food containers. You know, we get a lot of questions about pizza boxes. And um, if the pizza box is generally, you know, clear of any grease and food waste and cheese and sauce and maybe actual pizza, <laughs> if it's clear of any food waste or grease um, or any of that residue, then we'll gladly take it. Uh, if it does have grease, um, maybe, you know, the bottom is saturated in grease, but the lid is not, then, you know, we recommend, um, you know, tearing the bottom from the lid, recycling the lid. Um, but food waste can, um, can, can be a problem for us, which, which is why I caution when I answer that. Um, you know, to-go containers. Definitely, and those that's where it, uh, some of these questions are so challenging to answer and, and to-go containers is one of them for that reason. They come in so many different kinds, you have to be very specific. Um, and that's why on some of these, I'm gonna just defer to an email after the presentation just because they're very, very nuanced. Um, let me just see here, there's a couple others. So I've got some folks that are um, asking questions about very specific, um, tubs and I like I said I, I'm seeing some hummus questions I'm seeing some tofu questions I think we're going to handle those offline because it's very specific as to what exactly your container looks like um, sure. let's let's talk about some of these other items that are more uh, that are not plastics um, so uh, tin foil somebody asked a question about foil is that a recyclable item 
So um, I think someone asked about that uh, in our last session. The problem again is with food waste, it just becomes so contaminated. So, um, and if you have just like a small amount of tin foil, again, with our MRF being so large, um, it could potentially get lost in it. So if you're um, talking about uh, a pan, for example, like a turkey reusable foil pan, but it's brand new, it has no food waste in it, um, we could take that, but but again, I, you know, I see what you mean by tricky because um, we certainly don't want to discourage recycling. But you know, again, if it's got food waste in it, and for the most part, once you bake something like a pie in one of those um, uh, tin uh, containers, it, it, the food waste is like caked on it, um, and just hard to you know get rid of so unless you know basically if it's brand new unless it unless it's got absolutely no food waste in it i would say no yep um i have questions here also about well let me just um i have a question that maybe is applicable for everybody here just to again they just asked when does this start when does this new acceptance of this material start so let's make sure we're clear about that yeah it, effective immediately we are accepting tubs so um so yes please give us all your tubs <laughs> um i let me ask one more just um common question receipts paper receipts are those recyclable um you know what let me check on that Here's another one, a very common and a good question. Somebody asked, uh, do I need to take all the kind of tape and labels and things off of my cardboard box, all that shipping tape and so forth? Um, you know, typically no. Um, if you do, it's great. Um, and if it, if you receive a package that's just, you know, just doused in tape, um, I would say yes, but um, it's actually okay. Um, really what we want is for you to break down your cardboard because like I mentioned, it saves um, it saves room on the truck. Um, and if you can fit it into your containers, that's what, uh, that's what we really want. Um, how about lids on glass jars? Uh, we'd like those loose, please. In, in the recycling container, because those are two separate materials and glass is going into a different location. Um, we empty out our glass silo probably twice a day here in Columbus to um, to go to Dayton, Ohio. Um. I'll jump in here real quick, Andrew. Um, I've seen a couple of questions tonight regarding the amount of material that the Columbus MRF receives that would be um, classified as contamination or trash. Do you have a rough percentage to share with us tonight? Um, I would have to double check with our uh, operations manager. I, I don't want to um, give the wrong figure, um, but I think we operate at a at about last time I checked about an 87 percent um, uh, capture rate. So 87 percent of it is getting recycled. Um, here's a good one. Given that we have a national championship football game that's going to start here shortly, beer caps from glass bottles. Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. Uh, because they are so small, we recommend collecting them and putting them in maybe um, like a Coke can or like a beverage can, and then maybe like squishing the top a little bit um, so that they don't fall out. But they are they are so small, kind of like the plastic bottle caps. Um, that if you put them all in one location, it's it's helpful for us. And also go Buckeyes. Yes, right. Um, well, I think we're... Um, like I said, there are some very, very uh, specific questions that I don't think we're going to be able to answer without more information from folks. So we will send them an email and try to get you the information. Amy, unless you see any others, and for all of you participating, last chance if you have a question that hasn't been uh, asked or answered yet, uh, jump on there. Um, I, I, here's a good one. Um, do you give tours at the recycling center? Do you give tours at the MRF? Yes, we do. We love giving tours. Um, due to everything that we've got going on with the pandemic, we've suspended our tours, but hopefully we'll be able to 
um, get those going again. Um, if we can't do tours, we can certainly host um, an educational presentation. You know, we've done that for um, communities before for, uh, you know, web uh, being a guest on a webinar. I'm happy to assist with any of that um, because, you know, education is really important to us. And, and I think that's part of why um, you know, we we love partnering with Swaco because it is so important to you as well. Um, and, and and you know, when we said help us spread the word, um, that's a little punny, but it's it's true. We're gonna you know get folks um, to recycle the right material because of everyone that joined you know today to these it tuned into these webinars with Swaco um, to learn more, and they'll spread this message to their neighbors, to their families to their friends, they might even post about it on social media and getting that word out, that, that's really important to make sure that um, people get that message. So um, so yeah, we'd, we'd love to have tours back soon. Um, in the meantime, we try to get creative. Um, Diane, just to, right, right along the lines of what you uh, just said, I did have a question from somebody, if, folk, if people have permission, to um, share the PDF documents with their neighbors or their neighborhood groups and things like that. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I do wanna give a shout out also to some, this question about the, the touring the MERV, touring the recycling center. Um, there are some great videos on YouTube uh, of Runky MERVs. So if you wanna see, get a little flavor for how one of those things operates, if you just uh, search for Runky recycling or Runky MERV uh, and then Amy, uh, has a fantastic virtual tour of the landfill available on our website as well in a variety of places. So we can also give you a little flavor of what the landfill looks like uh, up close and personal when it's in operation. And we all hope to get back to that in-person tours of both facilities uh, some point in the future. Um, I do, I do want to clarify something because maybe somebody misunderstood something, but um, about the amount of contamination. So I just want to make sure we're real clear about this. Amount of contamination at the MRF um, obviously depends on where that material is coming from, but it's really in this range of 15, somewhere between maybe 10 to 20 percent, 15 percent is probably a good estimate. Um, yeah. Somebody thought maybe we said 50 percent, and it absolutely is not that. It's more, <laughs> more like 15, one five, 15 percent yeah. contamination. Um, that's all the stuff that it's designed to take out, you know, that, that shouldn't go in there. And we thank all of you again for participating. It's because of people like you willing to take some time tonight to learn a little bit more about that and to share this with your friends, neighbors, and colleagues so we can maybe keep that percentage uh, down below 15%. Um, so thanks everybody for your participation. Um, info at swaco.org for any questions that you have not had answered, and we will do our best to get uh, with you over the next day or two to answer all of these questions that we haven't been able to answer tonight. And then just as a friendly reminder, you will receive a um, an email or a pop-up after this webinar is over, just asking you to um, participate in a short survey. It's seven questions. It should take you about three minutes. We really do appreciate hearing your feedback, comments for improvements. If you have ideas for other topics you're interested in learning more about, please let us know. And we hope you'll uh, join us for one of our future webinar topics from the Waste to Resources webinar series. And thank you so much again. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your evening. Take care. Thank Bye. you.